Hi. I get written to quite a lot by people complaining that I don't do a finished project very often. That is, start at the beginning with a um, paper bag full of materials, chop them all up, mix them all together and produce something like a supercapacitor or a battery at the end of it and say, hey, hey, here you go guys, have a go at this one. My main reason for that is I'm just not interested. Um, batteries and supercapacitors in their structure are stunningly simple. They consist of only these things. You have some kind of uh, layer that is conductive. It could be a metal foil, it could be a carbon cloth, it could be a graphite covered bit or a piece of something. As long as it conducts, that's all that really matters. It doesn't really matter if it's solid or if it's in a web form or if it's a weave or a mesh. It really doesn't matter as long as it conducts. That's all you care about. Now on that, you put some active material. That active material is the material that you're going to make your battery or your supercapacitor out of. Again, the active material is going to be dependent on what you want to do, not what I want to tell you. I'm happy enough to tell you of all some of the available materials, and even happy to show you how to make some of the available materials, because that's what I'm about. But the choice of what you put there is up to you. Now, there's a whole load of things you can put there, depending on whether you're making a supercapacitor, the type of supercapacitor, or the battery. So if you're making a bog-standard, everyday supercapacitor that you can go down to an electronics store and buy, you'd put activated carbon on there. That's all, the same stuff that you're using to clean a fish tank, or keep the, uh, your shoes from smelling too badly. Activated carbon. Mix it up with a bit of glue, uh, wallpaper paste, spread it on your conductive material, and you will have a layer of active material. Now, in order to get a complete cell or a complete capacitor, you want exactly the reverse image. Because it's got to travel across something, there'll be two sides for it to go around. And it's the same thing. It's a conductive material of whatever form is suitable for you, whatever form you happen to be investigating, whatever form you want to try, and some kind of active material. In a box standard capacitor, these two active materials will be the same. They're activated carbon. They actually make them out of coconut fibres. They burn the coconut fibre, activate it with potassium hydroxide, glue it to the conductive material, slap it together and, hey presto, you've got a uh, supercapacitor. One slight thing missing is that if you press these two together, they make a short circuit, so you need something between them. A separator. Now that separator can again be anything that will do the job. So, um, fibreglass will do just nicely, thank you. You can buy a little sheet of very fine fibreglass down from the car or to the shop, and stick it between those two things and you will have a supercapacitor. Between the two of the things what you need is an electrolyte. An electrolyte is something that allows the movement of ions. It doesn't allow the movement of electrons. Electrons flow this way. Because this is the point at which you collect them. That is, you stick on a light bulb. The electrons will flow through it. Electrons flow through it because you've got ion flow through your electrolyte. So you need to fill that with an electrolyte. An electrolyte can be absolutely anything that will conduct ions. So salt water will do it. Um, some electrolytes are better than others in terms of the chemistry of the cell that you make, so you need to pay attention to what it is that you're actually making them out of to choose your electrolyte. But that's it. That's all a supercapacitor or a battery is. It looks exactly like that, whatever you make it from. It makes no difference. Whatever you make it from, that's how it looks. Now, it's no good, I think, and this is a personal view, it's no good copying what people do. The world is a really fascinating place. It's full of amazing things happening all of the time. And our role, I think, is to explore that. Have fun with it. Have a look at things. Try different things. Who knows what's going to work? You give it a go. I mean, it occurred to me that, you know, when you bake an egg, you have this um, skin in there. That's a semi-permeable membrane. Wouldn't it be interesting if you collected that, dried it, and used it as a separator? Would it work? There's another thing called kombucha tea. Kombucha tea um, is made by a mushroom, and the mushroom forms cellulose microfibrils, and it'll grow like a leathery kind of um, 
surface that gets thicker in time, that could be used as a separating material. It's microporous cellulose. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of possibilities out there to actually explore and experiment and to try. And I'm only one person, I can't try them all. You can try them all. Give them a go, explore your world, have a look, have a try. And that's what this channel is about. It's about providing some of the knowledge and skills and tools and uh, bits and pieces of materials to encourage you to go out and make this thing. Or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. To have a look at different materials that you happen across. Just things you're walking around and think, that's interesting. Give it a go. Who knows, maybe you will discover all of your own, um, out of your own experience, the next best supercapacitor, the one that will dominate the market and make you a million. Maybe it'll be you. It certainly won't be if all you do is copy what other people are doing, then it won't never be you. So what you need to do really is to get into your head how to explore. And that's what I try to do, give you some of those tools and skills on how to explore things. Then really, it's up to you to give it a go. Anyway, thank you for watching.